Bride get, gets out in the bridal dress, the guys in the tux, and they go, oh my God, married with children. And I said, oh, hi. All these envelopes on the table, Peg, is this supper? <laughs> A bill for that crime light. A $50 assessment. Peg, they're charging me 50 bucks. Do you really know the truth behind the scenes of Married with Children? Recently, Ed O'Neill revealed the co star from the show he disliked the most. Despite the many years of camaraderie both on and off screen, why is it that these co stars can't even bear to look each other in the eye? Let's delve into the revelations made about this feud, but first, to fully understand the situation, we should explore the journey that brought Ed to this moment in his career. Ed O'Neill's Early Life Ed O'Neill, who has been nominated for a Golden Globe twice, was born on April 12, 1946, in Youngstown, Ohio, United States. He was born into an Irish-American Catholic family. In addition to being a truck driver, his father was employed at the steel mill. On top of being a housewife, his mother worked in the field of social work. By the time O'Neill was 14 years old, he had already begun working in a steel company. After beginning his career as a soccer player, O'Neill went on to study history at Ohio University on a scholarship that was awarded to him for his football success. After completing his junior year in college, he received his diploma. O'Neill acknowledged that he did not put in a lot of effort to study because he was in a constant rivalry with his coach. As an undrafted free agent, O'Neill was selected by the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1969. At the time, the team was coached by Chuck Knoll, who was a rookie head coach. However, he was released during training camp and had to compete with fellow rookie defensive tackle Joe Green and L.C. Greenwood for a roster spot. He was considered for a position on the roster. Both of them became significant players in the steel curtain defense that the Steelers utilized in the 1970s, which contributed to their accomplishments. Following the completion of his transfer, he became a defensive lineman for Youngstown State University. During his time as an undergraduate student, he was a member of the fraternity Delta Sigma Phi and was inducted into the local chapter of the organization. A game that he participated in while he was a student at Youngstown State University pitted him against Roger Staubach, a player for the Pensacola Naval Station. When O'Neill hit Staubach out of bounds, his team ended up receiving a penalty of 15 yards, according to O'Neill. O'Neill supported himself by working as a server at O'Neill's Balloon Restaurant and as a substitute social studies teacher at a high school. Both of these jobs were in the same building. Once his acting career began to take off, he was fortunate enough to be able to leave behind low-paying occupations that were considered menial. By 1972, O'Neill was also beginning to lose trust in his acting career. Despite the fact that he had often auditioned for theater productions in Youngstown, he was only occasionally cast in a role that required him to speak. The sale of his vehicle, his savings account, and the money he made from his employment as a busboy allowed him to make a livelihood of $1,700 when he moved to New York in 1977. During the time that he was not working, he paid his tuition at the prestigious Circle in the Square Theatre School in New York. In addition, O'Neill was involved in the school's theatre school. O'Neill also frequently borrowed acting books and listened to recordings of John Barrymore and Robert Shaw from the Lincoln Center Library. However, his efforts were quickly rewarded with success. Youngstown State University welcomed O'Neill back as a student, and he was one of the first students to enroll in the theater department when it was first founded. His career as an actor started out in that same place. In the year 1979, he was selected to play the role of the primary understudy in the Broadway production of Knockout. As the star of the production left the play later that year, O'Neill was given the opportunity to shine on stage, and the spotlight was directed towards him. Working alongside Danny Aiello, he played the role of a boxer. With the event, he was able to establish his career in the industry, and he garnered excellent reviews for his performance. Additionally, he drew the attention of the director William Friedkin, who cast him in the film Cruise along with Al Pacino, 
who played the role of a police detective. In the year 1985, O'Neill appeared alongside Jeff Kinslin in an advertisement for Red Lobster. One of his brief appearances was in The Equalizer, which was a guest appearance. In addition to being a star in the picture, he was also the star of the production of Knockout in 1982 and the star who was selected to play New York Police Department investigator Jimmy Popeye Doyle in the television pilot Popeye Doyle during the year 1986. The movie was the first time that Gene Hackman's portrayal of the role was brought up. The relationship with France, it was recorded and shown on network television that the television pilot, which lasted for two hours, was broadcast. In spite of the fact that O'Neill's performance was highly praised and the pilot was well received, the series was not picked up for production. The majority of the factors that decide whether or not an actor is successful in Hollywood are a combination of talent, charisma, tenacity, and pure luck. His first breakthrough casting agent from the Fox television network noticed Ed. There are hundreds of thousands of performers in Los Angeles that harbor the desire to achieve recognition and financial success. Yet it is regrettable that only a small percentage of them are able to achieve their goals. One of O'Neill's contingency plans was to pursue a career in the field of covert surveillance in the event that his acting career did not pan out. When he was in the midst of playing the part of Lenny in a theatrical production of John Steinbeck's The French Connection in the year 1986, he had the good fortune to attract the attention of a casting agent from Fox TV programming. His voice was a crucial component in O'Neill's climb to prominence during the 1980s, when he was a prominent figure in the arts and entertainment industry. His talent as an actor earned him a lot of recognition, notably for the big female roles he played on television. In addition to that, he rose to prominence as a result of his work on Fox News programs. O'Neill also appeared in the play Mice and Men, which was written by John Steinbeck and produced at the Hartford Theatre in Hartford, Connecticut. This was an additional character that O'Neill played. An audition for the role of Al Bundy in the film Married was presented to him by the agent, who approached him with the opportunity. Beginning with the launch of Married with Children on April 5, 1987, the primetime lineup on Fox spanned 11 seasons, with the final episode planned to air on June 9, 1997. The premiere of the first season of Married with Children occurred on April 5, 1987. After the success of Married with Children, O'Neill made a concerted attempt to differentiate himself from the vacuous Al Bundy character he had played in feature films. While he was doing this, he continued to work on the lucrative position he had on Married with Children, for which he had won a number of nominations for the Golden Globe. In spite of this, his performances in the films Wayne's World, 1992, Little Giants, 1994, and Dutch, 1991, did not garner any acclaim despite the fact that they were successful. Not a single one of these films was a commercial success. It was at this time that he made his comeback to the theater in 1994, when he participated in a production of Lake Boat, a play written by David Mamet. During a brief appearance on the comedy variety show in Living Color, O'Neill triumphed over the character that was portrayed by Jamie Foxx to win the title of Dirty Dozen's champion. As an additional point of interest, he appeared in the comedy film Eight Simple Rules, which was released in the same year. On the television sitcom Married with Children, Katie Siegel portrayed Peggy Bundy, O'Neill's wife. Peggy Bundy was represented by Katie Siegel. Her character in this scene is the one that was previously in love with Kate Hennessy. Additionally, he had a role opposite Andrew Dice Clay in the film The Adventures of Ford Fairlane, which was one of the films that was released in the 1990s. In the autumn of 2009, O'Neill made his return to the world of family comedies by appearing on Modern Family. This was his first appearance in the genre since his departure. The character of Jay Pritchett, a man who had recently remarried to Gloria, was a character who was significantly younger than O'Neill. He performed the role of Jay Pritchett. When it comes to his relationships with his family, 
Pritchett consistently strikes a healthy balance. In spite of the fact that O'Neill was in charge of the upbringing of a young stepson, he was also successful in bringing his older children and his grandchildren, who were still little, back to their house. The television program was a huge success over all 11 seasons, that it was broadcast on television, and it was also honored with a number of prizes. More precisely, O'Neill was nominated for an Emmy three times in a row for his performance as the elderly patriarch of a household that contained members of several ethnic groups. This performance earned him the nominations. O'Neill was in high demand as a voice actor in addition to his role as a regular on the television show Modern Family as well. In addition to Wreck-It Ralph 2012, Finding Dory 2016, and Ralph Breaks the Internet 2018, he has provided his abilities to a lot of animated films that have been popular and have been profitable. The actor was working on Finding Dory at the time, but he had no idea that he would be delivering his voice for the character of the same name. He was absolutely uninformed of this knowledge. O'Neill did not become aware that he was the main character of the story until he was able to count the number of lines he had. More than that, he was not familiar with Britney Spears's name when he came across her. Ed O'Neill's relationship life. Although Ed O'Neill is typically recognized for his portrayals of parents on television who are both powerful and lovable, his personal life reveals a separate side of him, particularly through his long-lasting relationship with Catherine Rousseau. This is the case despite the fact that he is known for his portrayal of parents on television who are both strong and lovable. In spite of the fact that there are stories that claim that O'Neill and Rousseau initially met on the set of Married with Children, the truth of the matter is that they really tied the knot in 1986, which was more than two years before Rousseau passed away. During the year 1988, Rousseau had a little role in the show that was being shown. Rousseau's career was primarily small, named roles in a wide range of television episodes. These episodes included appearances on shows like O'Hara and Midnight Caller, as well as cameos on Married with Children on occasion. The fact that both of them have previous acting experience does not change the reality that this is the case. The trip that they have been on has been full of its fair share of highs and lows, just like the adventures of many other kinds of couples. The couple apparently went through phases in which they were together, and then went back to being together again while they were married. This occurred during the time that they were working together. In the year 2009, Rousseau and Catherine Rousseau tied the knot and became husband and wife. In 2009, O'Neill found himself in a situation where he was effectively living as a single father, which meant that their relationship was going through a difficult period. The occurrence of this took place about the same time when Modern Family was becoming more well-known as a result of its popularity. On the other hand, the couple has been successful in their efforts to conceal their emotional struggles from the general public, which has allowed them to keep their lives relatively private over the entirety of their relationship. Interestingly, both O'Neill and Rousseau are parents and they are parenting their two children, Claire and Sophia, together. This is a noteworthy phenomenon. This is something that cannot be overlooked. During an interview that took place in 2009 with the New York Post, O'Neill confessed that he had first been hesitant to become a parent. That interview took place in 2009. Rather than being his own idea, he indicated that it was his wife's idea to follow through with the decision to have children. On the other hand, Almost immediately after the birth of his daughters, he discovered that he was falling in love with the role of a parent. His description of them was that they were the most wonderful idea that had ever occurred to him. They had a surprise encounter with Leonardo DiCaprio while they were eating a lunch together on Father's Day, which is evidence that their family moments extend beyond the confines of their home. O'Neill relayed the story of his daughters, particularly Sophia, who was overcome with amazement after meeting the Hollywood celebrity. Sophia was particularly impressed by the encounter. On a personal level, Sophia was particularly struck by the interaction. 
A deeper connection that goes beyond the glitz and glamour of Hollywood is shown by O'Neill and Rousseau's continuous closeness and shared experiences as parents. This relationship highlights the relevance of love, dedication, and family in their lives. Despite the fact that their relationship has been filled with challenges and has been like a roller coaster ride, they have managed to overcome these obstacles. Ed O'Neill feud with Amanda Bears. According to Ed O'Neill, the disagreement between Amanda Bears and Ed O'Neill, who both appeared on the same episode of Married with Children, began over a television guide cover. During his interview on the podcast, which was hosted by Jesse Tyler Ferguson, O'Neill disclosed that the origin of his long-standing conflict with Bears can be traced back to the fact that he neglected to defend her when the show was chosen for a TV guide cover without her consent. Although she and David Garrison lived in the same neighborhood, they were both informed that they were not eligible to be on the cover due to a restriction that stated only a specific number of individuals were permitted to do so. As he mentioned in the podcast, O'Neill did not inquire about whether or not she and the other members of the cast would be featured because the opportunity to be featured on the cover was too wonderful to pass up. The question that Ferguson needed to know was whether or not O'Neill would be willing to assist his friend by traveling back in time. Did Ed O'Neill and Bears really falling out? While discussing his co-stars from the television show Married with Children in an interview with the Archive of America in 2013, O'Neill appeared to be unsure of the cause behind the disagreement that occurred between him and Bears. By remarking, we have a fantastic relationship, O'Neill demonstrated his ability to maintain harmony. But he admitted that his relationship with Amanda was tense and he pointed out that I'm not the only one who has these feelings. He acknowledged that he was unsure of the reason for their disconnection, implying that it was a natural progression that occurred over the course of time. When she embraced a more masculine persona, he stated that Bears, who was one of the first actresses in Hollywood to come out as homosexual, underwent a transformation. When he first became aware of her sexual orientation, he stated that she was nothing more than a charming gay woman. However, an alteration in her personality started to take place as she became less feminine in her relationship with her gay partner. An invitation to Bears' wedding to her bride was not extended to either O'Neill or David Faustino, according to O'Neill's stated statement. The conversation was recalled by him and he explained that Bear had tried to justify the choice by implying that he would find it hilarious for them to attend the church wearing tuxedos. O'Neill answered by stating that he did, in fact, find it humorous. And he said that he would not be the only person to disagree with the statement. He admitted that she might have had good reasons for removing him from the guest list, despite the fact that he regarded Bears's choice of costume to be humorous. That he and Beers got into a furious disagreement is something that O'Neill admits to having happened. He added that he had told her that she was very brilliant, but she had responded by telling him that she was not as bright as he was, which made him realize that she is smarter than he is. After the dispute reached such a high level of intensity, he announced that they were unable to collaborate. Either she or he will leave, and it is either way as a sign that she and her other co-stars who are married and have children, Bear showed up to offer her congratulations on the 2022 star that Christina Applegate will receive on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In the year 2018, during a fan conference held in Raleigh, North Carolina, Bear was questioned over her relationship with O'Neill. It was explained to her that she is a rule-following thumper who is quite rigorous. If someone has something to say that isn't kind, she believes that they should just keep it to themselves and not share it with everyone else around them. She disclosed during the conference that the discontent of the main actor had a huge impact towards the end of the series after it had been completed. Some components of the series were affected as a result of this displeasure. In addition, the decision was made to not conclude the show with a spectacular conclusion. Another factor that played a part was the ambiguity around whether or not there would be a season 12 of the show, as the production company was dubious about whether or not the show would continue. 
Bears, who is also a director, stated that she was directing a significant number of the episodes, a total of 31, as the series came to a finish. She stated that this made my job a little bit different and prompted her to speak up more regularly. And so that when things weren't going well, I would say that's not okay, she said. Also, she mentioned that. There is no love lost there, therefore. During an interview with the Fayetteville Observer in the year 2020, Bears told the story of how he encountered friction and arguments while working on set. She recognized that there were times when the mood wasn't as nice, particularly towards the end of the performance, but she didn't specifically criticize O'Neill by name. She went on to explain that spending a significant amount of time with other people invariably results in various experiences, both pleasant and negative. This tension among the cast and staff was a contributing factor in the final deterioration of the show, as it led to disagreements that damaged the production process and ultimately led to the show's demise. Bearst stated that she maintained communication with her co-star Christina Applegate, who played Kelly on the television sitcom Married with Children over the course of her career. In his declaration, Bearst stated, I am one of her biggest fans. I am still very good friends with David Garrison, the actor who played my first husband, she said. He was the guy who played my first husband. My experience with Ted McGinley, who played her second husband in recent years, has been nothing short of amazing. I've also had the pleasure of seeing him perform. The power battles on set between O'Neill and Bears. It looked that the disparities in leadership styles and working methods that existed between O'Neill and Bears were the primary source of the power struggles that occurred between the two of them. As soon as the first episode of Married with Children was shown, it was clear that O'Neill would be the most suitable candidate to fill the role of an expert set guide. At the time, Bearst added more than 10 years of experience to her acting portfolio, whereas he had more than 10 years of expertise in the entertainment industry. As a result of his meticulous portrayal of the charming failure Al Bundy, O'Neill accepted his role as the show's defining figure. O'Neill took authority behind the scenes and intervened in production issues in order to steer the series into previously unknown parts. Even in the face of challenges, his authoritative approach ensured that everything continued to move forward under his leadership as an excellent captain. On the other hand, as the seasons progressed, an issue emerged, and Bearst began directing a lot of the episodes in addition to appearing in them. She was able to exert more authority and control over the creative process as a result of her elevated position both in front of and behind the camera. The recognition that Bearst received for her accomplishments caused her self-assurance to surge. The long-standing system, which had O'Neill as the lead star and top producer with absolute authority over the others, was, however, thrown into disarray as a result of this change of power. Bearst began to express her own objectives and ambitions, challenging the standards that O'Neill had gotten accustomed to carefully enforcing through his authoritative and authoritative techniques. The former members of the staff observed that she also became irritated whenever he questioned her over the course of the years. The only person who ever questioned Bears's IQ or abilities was O'Neill, who had been working with her for more than a decade at the time. It was impossible to find a peaceful solution to the conflict that would inevitably arise between them and their respective objectives. As a result of their incompatibility in authority and personalities, even the most resilient co-workers were worn down, and they won respect and decency throughout the process. Ed O'Neill's Death Rumor In February of 2024, there were rumors that said the actor Ed O'Neill had passed away. These rumors gained hold, particularly after a Facebook page with the headline R.I.P. Ed O'Neill was created and received close to 1 million likes. There was a note on the page that stated that the well-known American actor had passed away, and it was specified that the event took place at approximately 11 o'clock Eastern Time on Tuesday, February 27, 2024. People were encouraged to share their condolences by liking and commenting on the message that was posted on the page. 
Almost immediately after learning that the actor had died away, a large number of admirers took to the Facebook page to express their condolences. On the Facebook page, there were a lot of comments related to Ed O'Neill's passing and the fact that Ed O'Neill had died away. As is customary, the page stated that the manufactured death had caused the Twitter sphere to go into a frenzy. There were some followers who were so naive that they believed the tweet, but there were also followers who immediately disregarded it. Perhaps they had learned their lesson from the numerous celebrity death rumors that have appeared in the past few months. Several individuals brought up the fact that the news was not only about Ed O'Neill's death, but also about the fact that Ed O'Neill had passed away. This is due to the fact that the passing of an actor of Ed O'Neill's level would have been widely publicized by networks. The fact that the news had not been covered by any of the major American networks is indicative of the fact that it was a fraudulent report. The assertion that Ed O'Neill is still alive was made public by the actor's reps on Wednesday, February 28th. The extensive list of famous people who have fallen prey to this hoax now includes him as a victim. He is still alive and doing well. Put an end to believing everything you see on the internet. They provided a response to the rumor. Fans of the well-liked actor flocked to social media to express their outrage over the fake news, describing it as thoughtless, unpleasant, and harmful to their feelings. Some people believe that this is evidence of his great popularity all around the world. In addition to this, were you aware that O'Neill, who participated in the debate team during his time in high school, takes pleasure in arguing and engaging in discourse on a wide range of topics? As time went on, he also discovered a new interest, which was Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He spent so much of his time in this sport that he earned a black belt in December of the year 2000. During the course of his training, Rory and Gracie served as his tutor for more than 22 years. On the 18th of May in 2013, O'Neill was presented with an honorary Doctor of Arts degree from his alma mater, Youngstown State University. After the controversial selection of Republican Congressman Bill Johnson to the position of president of the university on November 30, 2023, O'Neill made the announcement to IdeaStream that he would be returning his degree, adding, I don't want it. I'm going to start referring to it as Trump U. As a conclusion, it would appear that the mere fact that you spend a significant amount of time together and create memories does not inevitably result in the development of stronger relationships. There you have it, the unresolved feud between Ed O'Neill and Bears. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time.